Hey everyone, welcome to the Empty Nester Show, where we're pla always planting seeds of hope. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about soil test kits and the pH of soil and why it's important. And um, you may have just came over from the planting blueberry video that I just did, and that's kind of the reason I went ahead and bought a store-bought soil test and I looked on the internet and found a lot of great information on the soil in my area from 1904 to um, an earlier survey done and it shows enough that my soil is kind of in line with what the data is on the internet so that gave me a little more confidence of planting the blueberries and be able to keep them alive in St. Louis, our soil levels were 6.0 and above, you know, more to the alkaline area. And um, it kind of explains why azaleas and blueberries didn't do too well in St. Louis without, you know, adding sulfur or other fertilizers or, you know, chemicals. I'm not one that normally goes towards any type, even though sulfur and lime and things like that are organic. I just never was into the chemistry of the garden. I pretty much was lucky. My soil was really good and rich. I relied on mulches, you know, like the Back to Eden garden, to make sure everything lived properly and got enough water and moisture in the ground. But after doing these tests, I found that um, my soil was high in potash and um, phosphorus and nitrogen is really low on the scale. It's kind of yellow versus pink or kind of green uh, in here. And then the pH is um, in line with 5.5 to 6.0, the ratings that was on the internet. Let me go ahead and show you what I found. I did a soil a search on Google for soil pH in Missouri and I came up with a number of things, the soil survey and then what I'm doing is growing blueberries in Missouri and this is a PDF giving a lot of good information on how well blueberries grow here and I found this soil survey is um, 1961 to 1990 giving information on precipitation and temperature and so on. And then I got this one that's really um, interesting that gives you areas broke down into um, the pH level. I'm in the green for pH and that's medium 5.4 to 6.0 and then dominant P A P test. My I don't even have to count. I'm in the red, and that's low for P. Dominant green. Medium for K. And what was really interesting is this one from 1914 talked a lot about um, the soil structure and what type of soil and maximum and minimum rainfall and um, I found this to describe my soil exactly. My, with rainfall it said that our minimum was 22 inches, 22.52 inches and our maximum rainfall was 50.40 inches of rain. And then this page describes each township and it says that um, silt and loam for my area it says consists of light brown to dark brown or in places nearly black mellow silt loam under lining at 10 inches by gray to grayish yellow or yellowish brown viable silt loam to clay silt loam which becomes heavier with depth at grades of 15 to 18 inches into crumbly moderately plastic clay usually molted gray and red i found the one from 1904 to be really interesting it told me about the soil structure 
and that with where I'm living at was some of the richest soil. It also pointed out that the use of cow manure would be beneficial to crops like corn and wheat and it also on the other one where it was a majority of pH levels. Lime was um, said to be needed mostly in our soils and that's because we're to the acid side where corn likes 6.8 and that kind of made um, be another part of the reason I can't grow corn properly here. I need to add lime to the soil and um, I also knew the juggalone from the walnut tree was an issue but I read that corn wasn't affected by juggalone so I tried a test part up here and didn't have any luck with the corn so I think juggalone and um, when the pH isn't right, the nutrients aren't absorbed by the plant. So if it's too low, it can't get the nitrogen and phosphorus. And if it's too high, it again, can't get the right amount of nitrogen and phosphorus and potash that it needs. Other things like magnesium and boron could be bind also. And um, I don't know, or I can't tell you all the specifics, but... If you want to know more, you need to research more about your particular um, soil once you find out what your problem is, because you really don't need to know. You can, you know, for knowledge, everybody needs to know, but you need to know specifically what's going on in your soil if you're having an issue. Otherwise, good soil, good compost, good vegetables. In the rainwater in this container, it's about six. That's neutral, headed to alkaline. Anything over seven is alkaline. They replaced that phone pole earlier in, I think, fall, and dug down deeper to where they probably reached the subsoil are deeper to put it in and if you look in the jar here you can kind of see red where it probably reached the clay level and the mound that they left around it and I'm going to test this and see how much clay sand and loom are in it right here's the spot I took the sample from because it had the most red like that, so a little bit of red, and then it picks up some of the rocks. These are here's one of the rocks, it's multicolored and a little sparkly, mostly white, a little bit of red, possibly the clay, or I'm not sure what mineral. And this is really red rock sparkles, which might be sand. Let's put some water in here and test this. Let's take a closer look at the soil here. It's been set in about 24 hours, and I just took about a half a jar of soil and put it in here and shook it up and I've read where you could blend it in a blender and get it finer but you can kind of see that the heaviest stuff down here is sand the next layer is um, silt and the next tiny little layer is clay and if I were to shake it up even more and look at it again the next day you would probably find a little bit more clay but this kind of confirms what I've read on the internet from a survey done in 1904 that and I'm gonna go ahead and shake it up again and let it sit for another 24 hours okay I shook it up and brought it over here and I'm going to test and see if there's a nitrogen level in these two jars. Okay, 
Okay, this is the one from the blueberry area. What you do is one part soil, five parts water, but I probably have 50-50, and I don't know if that will affect anything other than it might have, you know, said that I had more than I did, but when I did the test before, there was zero nitrogen, so it's pretty much um, possibly that it's all bind up out there and doesn't record, or it's really deep in the soil. All you do is fill up the water to the line and open the capsules and put them in. Put the lid on. And shake it up. And then wait a minute for results to happen. With this settling so long, I've got less dirt in here than I did in my first samples. So I'm hoping something might show up. The meter is not quite accurate. If it were actually seven, it would be green in color versus yellow. This shows. Yellow, it's in between these two in color. And that would be six or less. Six, five and a half to six. And this one is all the way up to seven. A little over seven now. Headed to eight, so it's saying this soil is really alkaline. And this also, for the nitrogen, records it's very low or none. It doesn't record. There's very little color change on it. Shake it some more. And no matter how long I let it sit, it still doesn't record an actual color. So how my test compares, it's got medium for K and my test shows possibly high and high for here where it says low. So somehow my soil has more P than the majority, something's happened to my soil to give it more P and I don't know what. And then the pH is pretty much right on medium 4 to 0.5 to 6. It's great about all this testing. Now I know that I can grow the blueberries and that I do need to maintain uh, slightly acid soil for them to be happy and healthy and produce blueberries. And I also need to um, possibly add lime to the area that I want to grow corn in and see if I can get corn to grow well this year. I also learned that um, it's really important to when you see something to learn more about it and go ahead and try different things that may or may not help. It's all like science experiments, learning pretty much if you start fresh with a brand new raised bud and um, you really don't have any issues when you're breaking up and using existing sto soil then if you don't know what's in that soil you don't know what is lacking. We normally would flood lots and lots of rain and then last year was really dry and I've learned you know I knew rain washed out the nutrients and made the plant become like a hydroponic aquaponic plant and we have crop dads so there are living creatures to create you know some biodiversity in the water 
and there are ponds and stuff down the road that could be floating this way with some nutrients, but when I added coffee and, um, coffee and, what was it, Epsom sauce, it did keep the tomatoes going, it did keep the potatoes going, and it wasn't until, it was day after day after day after day of rain that, um, the plants finally gave up. Yeah, but I still got a, a crop. <laughs> so um, there are lots of ways, you know, that you can work around tons of rain. And what's hard is if you live in a completely acid soil, like some parts of South America where it's like 4.0, you have to bring in tons of um, lime to bring up your pH. And if you live in a, a really alkaline soil, you have to bring in sulfur to lower the pH. So um, that'll be enough for now, but um, if you haven't watched the blueberry planting video, I'll leave a link, you know, a picture right here so you can go back and watch it. And as time goes on, I'll add more and more videos on the blueberries, and this will turn into a playlist, or I'll add a playlist to it. So there might be two videos in the future. <laughs> But um, thank you for your time and interest. Have a wonderful day.